Okay, it's uh, four after now, so I think we can probably get started. Um, if you're new here, so you can add your name to the meeting minutes. Uh, that'd be great. Um, and the agenda today is actually, I think, pretty full. Um, so just as an update um, for before we get started, actually, is there anything that anyone would like to add to the agenda? Okay, um, just a couple highlight of events upcoming. Um, so if you're not aware, the Cloud Native Network Function Working Group meets every week uh, at 1600 UTC. So in hour after this, uh, you can jump right into the next meeting. Um, there is an Etsy plug test uh, right now going on in February. Um, if you're interested in that, more details in the link. And also there's uh, KubeCon in May. Um, and alongside of that, there is the Kubernetes on the Edge event, co-located event. And if you're interested in submitting to the CFP for that, it's currently open. It actually just got announced last week. Um, so get in while you still can. Um, and if you're interested in learning about, more about running Kubernetes on the Edge, definitely sign up and join the event. Uh, tickets will be launching later this week. So um, with that, uh, I think, most of this meeting is going to be uh, at Tal talking about his networking orchestration task force. And there's a link to the slides here. Um, and if we have time, there's also some folks from Ericsson who want to talk about, uh, I'm not sure how exactly to say it, uh, Eno, I think it is. But um, with that, Tal, I can hand it over to you. Thanks so much, Phil. Um, so uh, hello everyone, happy Monday. Um, I really want to use the time as effectively as possible. So uh, uh, my idea is this, um, I know many people, I see people joining even now, uh, know what this is about already because uh, uh, this was presented in a previous tug and there is a Slack channel where uh, some of us has been, have been discussing, discussing this. But I will do a very, very quick recap of the slides just to make sure that uh, everybody here knows what the general topic of this is. And I think the core item of the agenda that I, I, uh, I want to get through today is organization, really deciding over how we are going to continue to develop this topic. Um, and I think there are a few different options. So I think the core of the discussion should be pros and cons and some ideas on how, uh, how, to, uh, how to continue meeting, I guess that would be it. And if we do have time, I, I would love uh, to see the uh, intro for, uh, for Eno or ENO. Uh, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can leave as much time as possible for that. Okay, so I will, maybe I'll share my screen and just go over the slides just very quickly, even though I know everyone saw them, of course. Uh, but yeah, just to also maybe underscore some things uh, about the slide. So I hope everybody can see them. And um, and and the point yeah. also, uh, somebody say something? Yeah, I can see the slide. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, my favorite comments, yeah. Um, I, I want to emphasize all, in all my slides here, the tone here is not, it's, it's me kicking the ball forward with some ideas. Uh, if any of this seems controversial to anybody or you disagree with something, um, it, it does not mean that this is not the right topic for you, right? If, if any of these lines ring a bell to you and think, well, this is a problem, this is something we can work on together, um, that's what I'm trying to do here to, to provoke us. I'm, of course, I'm writing, <clears throat> excuse me, only from my own perspective of problems that I've seen. But um, yes, this is not the end all or, or be all of it. So <laughs> with that, you know, the starting point, I think, for a lot of us is that um, we, we don't have enough solutions <laughs> in Kubernetes for, for networking. Or I should say, we, we have solutions that are technical, 
but there are a lot of challenges in, in making them work and bringing them all together. And uh, again, one of the items in my agenda too is a gap analysis of looking at what we have right now and together trying to figure out, well, what's missing? How should these things work together better? And um, um, I do not think we will finish it today, <laughs> but I thought it's something we could start discussing. Um, so I'm not reading through the slides. Uh, everybody here can read, I assume, and just uh, uh, trying to uh, talk over them and give you an idea of uh, what the tone is. I, I will mention um, uh, Ian Wells and I have had, I thought, I thought a very interesting discussion uh, on top of the slides. So if you join the slides on, on uh, Google Docs, you can read the discussion there. Um, wh what was interesting for me is I think uh, one of the challenges is really understanding what a network even is and what does it mean to attach to a network, if that is even the right verb, right? We do know that we want our pods or maybe services or maybe uh, even other things, other resources in Kubernetes to connect, attach in some way to these networks. But we also know that networks are never one size fit all, right? Uh, and here I'm mentioning special networks, but even non-special networks, <laughs> it's not always clear what it means to connect to them, right? If you think back to something like uh, um, a Neutron in OpenStack, right? We had very specific resources. We had, or I, I shouldn't use the past tense, <laughs> but we have very specific resources such as uh, uh, networks with associated providers and we have uh, uh, subnets and we have ports and virtual IPs and other uh, re related resources to that. But those resources already define what networking is. <laughs> and I think um, to, to throw in and, and yeah, my comments are all littered down the side, you'll see here. And Yeah, was there something else? Did you get cut off? Sounds like it. Oh. Okay. Sounds like he's having problems with his network. <laughs> Correct, yeah. And you know, I'll go back to you. I, I, I would even say that these two words are a little controversial, maybe even in the name. So I just want to clarify at least how I understand them. Uh, why networking and not, and not network <laughs> as the word here? And uh, it kind of ties to the, the problem I was just uh, talking about. We don't even know what a network is exactly. So networking seems to be the more general idea here. Orchestration too, Ian brought up the point that he's not sure this is really about orchestration. Um, I think again, orchestration can mean a lot of different things to different people. And uh, if you don't accept my definition, that's also okay. Uh, my, my point is that even though we have the low level solutions to a lot of these things and I'm not even mentioning things like Cilium and uh, Submariner and all kinds of uh, high performance, secure, low level networking solutions for Kubernetes. A lot of these things exist, but I think all of us found out, you know, if you've ever done some sort of POC uh, to see, hey, can I move my products to Kubernetes? Can, can I get this working for me? We can, we can all, I think, looking at the list of uh, people on the meeting today, <laughs> I think probably all of us has, have worked on some sort of advanced uh, solution based on these technologies, and we know it is possible. Our challenge, I think, really is tying them together in a way that you can design workloads uh, that in, in a scalable manner, <laughs> so designing many workloads. Uh, so, so that's what I'm calling orchestration here. You can also call it management. Uh, you can also call it uh, distribution, deployment. Um, I, I think there are a lot of different words for it. So I use orchestration as a shorthand and I mean to offend nobody who, who might think that orchestration uh, deals more specifically with other things. Um, no, just one, one note, Ian is using the chat as a medium to communicate because oh, the okay. audio is broken. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Okay, okay, I think maybe I'll just very quickly just finish this and then I'll go back to the chat and just end this uh, 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 rambling 
over the slides. <laughs> so uh, one idea I kind of talked about was to bring back the, the and this ties to what I mean by orchestration. Um, uh, Neutron yeah. and OpenStack was not, <laughs> it's not amazing. It doesn't solve all the problems, but it does, and it also creates problems, but it does have some idea of networking as a service, right? You, you request the provider and the provider provides something. Now we don't want exactly the same thing in Kubernetes in terms of being able to provide the same thing, but we do know that somebody needs to, some component in the system needs to manage this for us and uh, manage all the different clients that require that provisioning, right? And I gave the example in a previous talk, I created this POC called NAP that intends to create providers for Multis under the idea that sure, Maltus, you can write a CNI config and do anything with it really, but who's going to be able to manage all these configs? Who's gonna be say that two different configs that two different designers created would be able to work on the same space? So you need some way to coordinate these things. Um, so let me stop sharing <laughs> and I'll look at the chat. Um, Yeah, I think, uh, uh, yeah. Hopefully, Ian, I, I, uh, I, <laughs> I addressed that uh, well enough. Um, okay, so, well, well, first of all, before I really get into organization, any kind of high level comments or even low level comments on, on what I presented so far that you think can help us uh, move forward today? I think the, the portability part, at least for, for me, that's a, that's a key, key thing here. So somehow we need to ensure that that workloads are portable between different Kubernetes instances, even if these different Kubernetes instances are using different networking solutions. Yeah, of course I agree. <laughs> I will just underline that um... I think portability too can be sometimes a controversial word for some people. We're obviously talking about being able to run on, on different Kubernetes solutions, maybe different platforms, but we also want to make sure that within our own, own organization, we can actually deploy on multiple sites and possibly with multiple technologies, as long as those technologies are trying to achieve the same thing. So, um, yeah, my my laptop audio has decided to destroy itself and I don't know why. I mean, let, let's not confuse implementation from interface because in an ideal world, we would have one interface. I don't care how that interface is implemented. I care that that interface is up to the job, which is why the CNI exists, right? We don't care which CNI we're using, we shouldn't, but we care that the CNI does the job that the interface describes which is why Kubernetes applications today work on any Kubernetes with any CNI plugged in. So it, it's not about look at my shiny code that I've written, it's about look at my interface definition that I've written, that's the more important problem. I, yes, you know, I, I, there, there's a delicate balance I think there between the implementation and the abstraction or the modeling above it because we obviously want to share and group similarities as much as we can, right? Uh, at the same time, avoiding the problem of a lowest common denominator, right? We, we don't want to have something that just, here's an L2 network <laughs> with some maybe annotations. And then there are, we, we can probably think of 10 different ways to implement L2 networking inside on top or at the side of, of uh, Kubernetes. Um, but we still want maybe a way to share uh, we don't want to keep reinventing the wheel for every single solution and make every single solution a snowflake. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, and, and this will come up when we talk about ENO as well, but effectively, firstly, it needs to be driven top down. What is the problem that we have as opposed to here is a great solution. Let me hammer the problem into the form that's into a form that this solution solves, which is easily done it's it's an easy thing to to do and it would be a mistake to assume that just because i've written something it's necessarily the right idea um the other one is 
um, perhaps it's worth remembering that the simpler we can make the platform, the more we can enable applications on that platform to do the job, the more flexible that is. Because to take the L2 network example, if I could run an application that gives me layer two networks, then I've solved the problem of layer two networking, but I haven't exclusively solved the problem of layer two networking. So it might be that a simpler platform interface is actually more useful to us if it enables more things. We can always write code and ship it as, you know, de uh, as default services, for instance, that's entirely possible. But if we don't build it into the platform, then it doesn't mean to say that's the only thing you could possibly use. You can be inventive after that. Right. You know, I, I think one of the questions is here is even if we want to build a platform, right? Um, uh, the old joke of, you know, we have 10 standards, so let's create another standard to standardize those standards. And um, uh, well, it, it, that much is true. But <laughs> if we look at the solutions that we have, um, to a greater or lesser extent, you can always come up with a problem that they don't solve for. So um, we do need to build something. We're not building it because we're bored and co writing code is fun. We're building it because we're actually short of functionality. Right, I, I suspect that might be the case, um, you know, but, uh, but I don't wanna jump ahead, <laughs> even though I suspect that might be the case. I think doing a proper gap analysis and trying to understand, per perhaps there's one project, even the uh, you know, project that we're gonna be talking about today that could be, uh, extended, improved, worked upon, or generalized in some way that could uh, do what we hope to achieve. Uh, we don't have to start from scratch, I guess that's my point. And maybe with that, I, I do want to move to um, the, the real pressing topic. As I said, uh, how do we move on from here in terms of organization? Because this this started kind of haphazard. Uh, I gave a presentation, um, it generated some interest. Um, and I think a lot of us realized that uh, we're all facing the same problems and we could probably join forces in, um, in, in finding a solution. By the way, I'm hearing some uh, clicks. Uh, I hope everybody is muted so we can hear clearly. Um, and, uh, um, I wonder who's not muted. So, uh, Tom, before we go into I, execution, sorry, I, mm -hmm. I, I'd sure. like to understand, are we really focusing on the networking orchestration, or are we talking about, first of all, what we need to orchestrate, uh, so the fundamental uh, telco networking that's required for a healthy cloud-native network function, um, and then once we have that well-defined, we can start talking about how should that get you know, orchestrated. So, okay, well, well, two ways I would respond and other people can respond in different ways. Um, definitely not thinking about building an orchestrator. <laughs> it's more about thinking about the requirements for orchestration generally, right? So uh, I'm not thinking about building a management layer, but I am thinking about what kind of custom resources do we need in Kubernetes to, to implement that. So, so, so you know, going back to uh, the point Ian made, are we going to be building a platform or maybe the decision will be that we just need to create uh, very clear custom resources and maybe allow different kinds of implementations, operators to, to actually turn them into to a solution. <clears throat> have everybody use the same set of, of custom resources. So we get portability that way, right? Um, and you mentioned network functions, right? I, I think we're even thinking more abstractly than that, right? I'm not, at least I didn't even mention the, the word network function. That kind of encapsulation or network services or what's in between, or, you know, we're, we're thinking of this from a telco perspective, of course, here in the tug, uh, but it's not even just telco solutions, right? Uh, there are other things that require advanced and special networking. Uh, and uh, yeah. <laughs> so another quick question, because you're talking about organization, what is the plan to engage like SIG networking and Kate's architecture? Because the thing that scares me is you said we're all going to try to like standardize on something that's called a custom resource definition and custom and standard tend to clash pretty mightily. So I'm just kind of curious, like if these are just CRDs and operators floating around, 
Yeah, I, this is a, okay. Thank you for bringing us to the topic. So it's a, so the question really is how do we organize? And I, I just threw that out as an idea. Again, I don't think I, that might be, you know, we might decide that the correct direction is to go to SIG networking and to, and to give a, a strong proposal that they can't say no to, right? To, to the whole group. Uh, but here's the first question. Should this be, should we organize as a Kubernetes SIG? Uh, telco networking, or I don't know exactly what to call it, or networking orchestration, or something like that, or, but should, would that be uh, the best way to move forward with this? And another way to move forward would be maybe a work group uh, within a, a CNCF, so modeled kind of like the CNF work group that was just started that I think has been exciting. and. Uh, Hopefully we'll be productive. Um, I'm a bit lost myself, so I about how to move forward. So I'd love to hear ideas from from people here. Yeah, well, I'd also this like is... to understand the difference between the CNF working group, which says it's going to tackle low level network. I mean, I don't want to pull the whole like my group's doing the same thing your group's doing type thing, because um, unlike I felt there was a very clear distinction between what Anukit was trying to solve and what the tug slash CNF working group was trying to solve. Like one is building reference architectures, trying to like standardize platform side. The other one is like just looking at like how to do networking and design practices in case. So I'm kind of curious like where the clear distinction is here between the CNF working group and the um, network orchestration group. This is Taylor. Um, I've, I've been thinking about this too, I guess, since uh, the Pre first presentation tell and it there's definitely overlap between all of them i'd say the the first part would be the problem uh, trying to find doing the gap analysis and what is the problem to solve and that could very much be in scope for what the cnf working group is wanting right now the focus happens to be on a, a smaller area, but the overall scope of the group is would include how do you make CNFs portable, um, which they are networking applications. That's what we're really saying. How do you make networking applications that are going to work on as many you know platforms that are Kubernetes based as possible? So networking, as you say, versus ne the network tell. That's a central part of what's needed. It just happens to not be the current focus. And then from the telecom user group, searching and looking for problems, if you go back to even the, the original white paper that you were working on, Gerge, the follow-up white paper that got completed, doing that type of gap analysis is all in scope for those. So I'm not saying where at least on the analysis and of the problems in networking that you're proposing or their tell, I don't see that as out of scope. And I, I'm, I'm not sure that we need another group to say, let's go find the problems. And then the second part is a separation of any type of solution from the problem, I think is necessary. So if, if we're looking at projects that look like they're a, a, a potential good solution, those should be segmented off from the group that's trying to look and be unbiased, specifically within CNCF. So whether you're talking about a working group or a SIG, the goals are to find problems that end users may have, and then try to look at the different solutions and and within CNCF, it's giving people multiple options, not, not picking one. So any type of opinionated solution needs to be separated. Um, we, we've discussed this before in the terms of the audiences that we have. Um, and, and we have to remember there's not just one. And some of them are very underrepresented as well. Um, setting aside the doers and what they want to do for a second, then the people that bring problems to us are... CNF developers, and I think they are very underrepresented. What are they actually trying to do? What are the things they're finding difficult? We know we've got network architects within service providers or anyone else trying to solve a network problem. 
um, perhaps also not terribly well represented are the people who are actually going to operate this solution need to figure out whether or not it's controllable or whether it, when it goes wrong, it will go wrong in weird and inscrutable ways they can't just solve their problem. There is, in the CNF working group, there is a document that tries to expand upon that. Um, but it needs to be, um, you know, if we knew what our audiences were, we could use these different groups to actually bring the right people together at the right time. I don't need necessarily a network architect in the room to discuss, you know, nitty gritty CNF programming problems. I need to talk to CNF developers and find out what programming problems they have, as an example. They're the ones who have to talk to me in that. So having different ways of organizing it so that we get the right audience together to discuss their mutual problems simultaneously, that would be perhaps the most useful way of doing this. Um, that makes a lot of sense to me. I like to tailor your separation between, a, a, or no, I think it was Ian who said, a doers versus, uh, what was the uh, opposition to doers? Um, problem bringers, I think. <laughs> problem. Um, <laughs> it, it, in the sense that, you know, doers should be doing things that solve problems, but you need to define your problems, like we keep saying. So, so you know, um, it, it's fine that we've got people who actually want to change Kubernetes, write code, write examples, and so on. I'm absolutely not discouraging those, but the problem we have is that, that, you know, we should have a cohesive view of what the problem is from as many perspectives as we can get to make sure we're actually attacking it correctly. Um, and um, I think, actually, it's not that we haven't got a lot of people in the room and today is a fine example. It's that our balance is a bit skewed. So, you know, if we want people to write CNFs, a different way of looking at this is Kubernetes was written to solve people's problems writing applications. And so application developers are one of its primary audiences. Now, uh, hands up anybody who's written a CNF. So many hands. Uh <laughs> I don't want us to spiral off topic though, Bill, because I think this is an important one. I mean, like, I'm not saying that there shouldn't be two different groups or there should. I do feel that like there's some duplication, but like, it's really, really hard to like do real work, if, especially if you're trying to be in the doer category and also attend 15 different groups. Exactly. Um, I worry too, like just gonna be, you know, blunt tell, um, cause I've seen it in the past. If we're not tying into the greater CNCF ecosystem, we're going to be treated as a one-off and have a hard time getting like things that may be good for Kubernetes overall, et cetera, um, pushed into the you know larger conversation. And then conversely, I, I do think I was really hoping that the CNF working group or the tug was going to spin into something a little bit more concrete. Cause like if I go to I, I attend SIG networking calls, I mean they might as well call it SIG sidecar. I I mean. Anytime I want to ask about low level networking questions, get help with like, how would you do X, Y, or Z? How do I build this? It's always like, you know, I've got leprosy and they're like, stay away from this guy. He's asking terrible, uncomfortable questions that we don't want to address here. So yeah. I'm really kind of curious, kind of like what the long term evolution. And I kind of thought that that's what the CNF working group was spawning into. And if that's not the case, that's fine. But like some clarity it'd be nice for us to know like where we could focus our efforts to have the biggest impact on this space because it does need to be addressed in my opinion so so let me brainstorm something because i, I was listening very carefully to taylor who i think has a lot of experience with this organization um my thought is you know i, I named this a task force which was just a name i chose that's not like anything else and maybe it's a good idea to keep it that way so kind of like a cross group uh, task force because uh, Jeff, as you said, many of us attend many of these meetings. There are only so many hours a week, and different ones of us attend different meetings according, you know, to our priorities. We we have to pick and choose. We can't go to all of them. You know, just look at the CNCF calendar. There's something every hour of the day, right? And all of them might be interesting and might be relevant. Um, so maybe the idea is to, maybe a, an idea could be to uh, have this task force really be. Uh, unaffiliated directly, it could be underneath the CNF uh, uh, work group, but it should work independently, right? Because as, people, as some of you have said, and you know, I, I'll echo the same thing. I think the CNF work group is very exciting, but it's big. There's, there's a lot of people there bringing in different topics. And Jeff, as you said, that bringing up some lower level ideas about networking could you know, it, it's hard to get everybody to focus on the same thing, especially if we intend to be doers. 
if we intend to be doers, I, I can see us easily taking up every single CNF meeting just on this topic, right? So, um, and we can't do that. There should be more room there under that umbrella for the agenda. So maybe one way to think of this is to keep it as this notion as a task force, which doesn't have necessarily an official designation under a CNCF, we can meet occasionally and we can funnel this into the CNF work group where it's, where it's appropriate. Do you think like creating an independent repo start like, I don't know, agreeing things? Because I, I think we, st we still need some place where we can have discussions and agreements and stuff like that. Yeah, so there's, you know, there's the Slack channel that I hope uh, everybody saw the link and, and can join if they're interested. Um, and by the way, we can continue to discuss this there if we don't settle on anything today. Um, it's just easier to do in person, I think. Um, yeah, the, the GitHub style repository uh, seems pretty cool, the way the CNF uh, work group works. Uh, we, can, we can really copy that model exactly. Uh, how do people feel about that? Does, do you feel like that's productive using GitHub discussions and things like that? So I'm, I want to go back to the um, one primary thing I was saying, Tal, the splitting of finding the problem, you know, you're trying to um, split those two roles versus the doers creating solutions. So if, if you're on the side where you're wanting to try to say, I understand the problem that's been presented and I want to show some solutions, whether you're looking to some outside project or you're actively working on one, that side should be, could be split off and you could have a, a new repository or whatever you want to organize that project and say, this is one to put forward or even present it just as in this group or wherever. You could present them across all, um, any group that you think it would be relevant to. Finding the problem though, that one, and, and maybe that's under a task force or, or whatever, that should be separated. And if you're looking at finding the problem, that could be you know this task force that you, you, you say you wanna organize around, it could be under the tag, it could be the CNF working group. Right now on the problem itself, it seems very relevant for say the new use cases. So Ian was pushing forward the last um, several weeks. It, it came actually from the end of last year talking about use cases before we talk about best practices. Like what, what are these for? What's the context? Well, there will be um, within any use case, you're going to have some problems that you're trying to solve. And so with what you're putting forward, there are some, there's gonna be use cases behind these networking uh, gaps and Kubernetes that you're talking about. Workloads are gonna have a problem with handling the networking. So what are those? What are those use cases? And then starting to state the problems. That would fit on the working group in my mind very well, um, but it doesn't have to be. So you could definitely have a task force that meets around it you could say, and, and you could do this right now is my point, in the CNF working group. You can have someone that says, what we care about is state. How are we handling cloud uh, state and data in a cloud native way? We really wanna focus on that problem space because we want solutions that are gonna help us as a CNF vendor build the applications that actually continue to function, but fall in a cloud native you know, best practices. Well, you could have a focused task force. They're still working within the CNF working group because you're saying we want all these networking applications to benefit, but it's a focus group and you can keep meeting. We want space in the repository to keep adding new documents that are about each one of those topics. So networking tell seems like a, a focused topic for networking applications that needs to happen. So my, my suggestion would at least be to think about it being something that would be relevant there. Yeah, I, 
That, that sounds like a great start. Um, it's probably worth bringing up maybe again in the CNF work group to make sure that every, although I, I think there's a lot of overlap uh, between people in this meeting today and, and that uh, group, but um, to make sure that that group agrees. I, I would say that um, thinking about it, it sounds like a good starting point, but I, I hope it won't be the, the ending point because uh, as I said, it's not all about CNFs. Um, the CNF working group and specifying requirements for CNFs and portability, CNFs encapsulate maybe the networking problem in a very specific way, uh, both technically and both from a business perspective, just the, the kind of uh, roles that are in the room, uh, equipment providers, vendors, platform providers, orchestration providers, um, and, and other solution integrations and providers. Uh, um, CNFs are, as, as a focal point for the problem and the use cases, are a very specific uh, use case. Um, I'm hoping at least to look at it in a way that would um, right. look um, at problems more generally, right? I, I don't think anyone's disagreeing with that, um, and not least because if we can come up with a way of solving problems more generally, they're probably problems we encounter ourselves in some point in the future with a CNF hat on. That's, that's fine. But what Taylor's preaching and mainly because I've been preaching it to him is, is problem before solution. If you think that a given solution can solve more than just this problem, you can put that argument down. You can say, you know, this is more general purpose. This doesn't attack just the one problem. Or alternatively, you can say, here is another problem that doesn't have something to do with CNFs that is worth our time to solve. That's totally fine. But um, if you approach this bottom up from the, you know, we'll solve the problem, solve the problem undefined thereof of networking orchestration, and that will solve all the network problems in the world. Without actually asking yourself what the network problems are, you'll miss the target. So we've got to be, you know, if you, if you want to bring other problems to this and say these need to be solved as well, then define your problem. But can't we take this in steps rather than solving everything in one go? We have de facto standards that applications that are out there use today. It's primary networking and it's multi-secondary networking in its several incarnations. And for those, we need orchestration and automation, right? Why can't we just not finishing there, but start with this while we are at the same time discussing what else is needed to address application networking needs and portability? Um, Jan, so how so, would you define so that? Uh, Ian, one, one moment. So I'd say that um, there's two things there. There's how do we work with what we have? And then what were the problems that were trying to be solved? So yes, there are some solutions, but there's also some new solutions like network service mesh I'll just put out is a new solution that's not, it's not being used standard. I'd say as like uh, a lot of the CNIs, you have other CNIs that are coming out that are doing some different things. But if you if you go further back and say, what were the problems that we were trying to solve? What are different ways? That's one path that we can take that should be completely separated. If we say, let's just keep building with what we already have, then it's not questioning whether or not we went down the right path. And if we step away from anything new that we're doing in these groups, and you go look at, um, the Kubernetes groups that have been talking about networking for a while, they already know that there's problems with the current paths. They've been looking at it for a long time. Mm -hmm. So yes, for building what we have so that you can do things with what's currently available, that should be separated from a group that says, we want to try to look for new ways to do it. So um, have, I would say two task force, if you want to call them task force, one to help the current staff and one to look at what's new. I, I, I just want to put words in Jan's mouth and see whether I'm choosing the right ones. So when you're saying, how do we use it? Are we really saying there, okay, so I've got a bunch of CNFs and hypothetically, or in reality, I'm just using a, a networking solution that I found on the shelf. Now, how do I actually use those CNFs? Is that the orchestration that you're talking about? How do I set up my clusters and the underlying infrastructure 
so that I can deploy my applications. Because the applications, they only want to refer to uh, the, the, the tools that they know. It's network attachment definitions as network annotations and uh, some, some things for the primary networking. Today, Today, yes, but they, they, we, are totally, they, they, we are totally lacking orchestration and automation for setting up clusters and underlying infrastructure to provide those services that applications just want to consume. That's what the yes, CNTP thought, is for, isn't it? I have not seen any, no, any single I, attempt I, at addressing this. I would this. disagree with that. Like, CNTP is to like, cherry pick current solutions, not about building new solutions. And what we miss currently is what I think like is two kinds of interfaces from QNTS. One is to, to build and configure networks or networking solutions. And that's, I think, what Jan mentioned. And the other is an abstract interface to consume these networks, because I think we currently do not have that. Even if we have the CNIs, the different CNIs have different annotations, and they can be totally incompatible with each other. Yes, I, I, but I think the, the, we're drawing, we're trying to find the interface on the wrong level. My belief is the interface for applications to consume is the name of the network attachment definition. Um, so I, I, this is very exciting, but I, I in the interest of time, I'm, I'm hoping we can get back to the, the topic of organization so we can come out of this meeting today with some idea. Yeah, I, I want to like really quick pile on with Tal here because this is what always happens. And um, so there's two things. Um, a, I think Taylor's right that if we completely splinter off, I don't think we're long-term, even if you build really cool, like say the doers go and build something, I don't think it's gonna like get the adoption that they want. Like there needs to be some type of, you know, consideration on like, I mean, let me use an example. Um, Gergay has proposed alternate APIs in the past for Kubernetes based on like some of his initial gap analysis, right? Let's say a small group of people go out and they actually build this and it works and it's good. If we're not, you know, in some type of like cohesive like agreement within our little domain here, I don't see how that is going to, without major, major, major efforts, get any type of traction within the rest of the Kubernetes ecosystem who a lot of times don't actually care what we're doing, if we're just being honest, right? Like, I mean, there's a reason why SIG networking really is SIG sidecar SIG service mesh because that's what they care about in networking. But they have their SIG and then they have these like different, you know, groups. It's kind of like what Taylor was saying, right? Like, you know, even if we need to change like the overarching name of the CNF working group, there needs to be some type of collective because it's always the same 30 of us on all these different calls. So like, how do we subdivide so someone like Tal can go and focus on the things that are important to him while it's still funneling up to this bigger collective that we have here for the things that Jan was just talking about, for the things that Ian's talking about. Because if not, we're just gonna have all these little independent efforts that get like 50% done, and we're not gonna have a unified voice in trying to go to the CNCF as a whole to like get some of these changes put in. So, uh, you know, I think we're, we're kind of, we kind of overdid the differences here between doers and, uh, and problem providers. As you mentioned, Jeff, it's really often this, the same people. Um, and we're not really dividing the work. All these meetings are kind of on different topics. Uh, I, I think we're all in coordination. It's not like these things are done in silos. I don't think the CNCF is a, is a cobbles together silos. Uh, so, so we are coordinating and part of discussions like this are those coordination. Of course, we, we want to be efficient and don't want to waste time only on constantly coordinating efforts. So in the effort of moving in the <laughs> In the interest of moving forward, Taylor, um, I propose that we basically accept your proposal here. <laughs> that uh, that if this is uh, hopefully this is what you were uh, matches with what you were proposing. But the idea is that let's continue working for now under the CNF working group. Um, we can maybe use the GitHub area there and create a new uh, topic. We can think about exactly how to organize it. We'll start with maybe I'm proposing the other things on my agenda for today that we won't get to things like a gap analysis and uh, uh, you know we, we can continue discuss discussing how what we're actually going to do right in terms of creating a platform or or, or something new. Um, 
And yeah, we, we don't have to treat it at the, as the end all be all. This, this thing can continue to evolve. And as we learn maybe more efficient way to, to work here, but I think it's a good starting point. Um, and you know, as, as I <laughs> continue that point, the difference between the doers and the architects, right? These things always work together. It always evolves. You create a POC, you learn something new. You can never find your complete solution on paper, at least not from uh, my perspective. Uh, there's the slideware and there's the software. <laughs> and hopefully, they'll continue talking to each other and, and evolving. Um, none of us in the room right now has a complete picture of everything and a complete solution to everything. So we also need each other. <laughs> um, so, that sounds good. Um, let's follow up after and and try to look at some of the existing discussions and items and maybe some of the things that aren't quite into the repository yet, but what we're planning. And then we can see where some of this would fit. And some may fit under existing things. And I, I'm just from looking at slides and stuff, I think we're going to need new discussions, maybe even new folders definitely want to put some stuff into the new use case area to talk about it and then see what may should be split out and run independently of the CNF working group. And on that, I just want to put forward for those that haven't been in conversations. Um, we are planning on having something equivalent to whatever we want to call the SIG network no, not the one that we've been referring to, but we've had conversations with the um, Lee and Matt from the current SIG network in CNCF. We've been talking with SIG app delivery because there's it goes across those. We've been talking to the other SIGs. We do think there's likely to be something that's a superset of what the CNF working group does some of the stuff that may be out of scope for the CNF working group that you've been doing. So there will be something. And for those that are asking, what about covering other things in a larger scale? Yes, we're working on that. That's longer term to make sure that we're aligned with the rest of what CNCF does, but we're moving towards those. So we're not going to be just focused on a network function, Tal. But we can, we can talk some about what do we do next? I did move the Eno, um, the Eno items out from underneath your bullet point in the agenda, because I do want to say from the standpoint of presenting solutions, we don't want to stop that. We actually want to hear. So coming to the telecom user group and um, maybe making a sp space and even in the CNF working group for pre presentation on ideas on projects, we want to make space for that. If the telecom user group is maybe the more open space right now that goes beyond what the CNF working group, we could start meeting more often than once a month. But um, we have about eight minutes. I don't know how much time is needed for the Eno. If that's something that we want to present now or, or defer, Tal, um, I, were you going to present on that or is someone else? No, uh, hi, this is Alok. Yeah. Oh, Ideally, hey. we, we, yeah, hey, we kind of wanted at least around 30 minutes, but yeah, with the interest of time, if, if it, it can be a short introduction, I can like highlight the major portions and just to trigger this up and we can take in detail in some future dedicated sessions or in some future talk meetings as well. Yeah, I, I apologize, Alok. I really tried to. No, that's okay, totally fine. I mean, these kind of a discussions are really important to set the stage up, and so don't don't worry, and we can take it. Yeah. If um, you'd like to give a short introduction right now, I can just hand that over to you. You can have the rest of the time. Okay. Yeah, and then maybe we could get like a a full presentation at the next meeting. Sure, we can do that. Uh, also, I would like to ask to to ask something small. Uh, so this meeting is is happening once per month, right? So because uh, I'm seeing that we have many topics that we need to discuss and uh, many things that we need to solve, actually, uh, is there any plan to make this uh, more uh, often, or we we should still keep it like uh, just once per month? What is your thoughts on that? 
Realistically, it's once every two months because of the time zone uh, issue. Well, so we have right now the it's once a month, but the time um, shifts. So the next call would be um, several hours earlier, trying to make it easier for Asia Pacific to join um, anyone in Asia Pacific time zones. But if, if there is an interest to start having more of, and the telecom user group really is a space to say, we have ideas of any type, something that we wanna bring a problem that we don't know where it should go. We have a, just a, a project or whatever. It's open for anything related to, I'd say networking, not just telecom uh, specific, but any networking stuff that could be applied in, in the telecom world would, would be appropriate. And if we want to start meeting more than once a month, um, maybe even saying at least once a month for the, both versus every other month, like you're saying, Tal, then we could do that. Um, I, I guess just putting that forward right now, is there an interest to start meeting in the telecom user group more than once a month, specifically for this time zone call, the 1500 UTC? Do we want it to start meeting once a month or, or more? Uh, nobody is <laughs> more meetings, right? Uh, Taylor, the, the issue is that sometimes we have these meetings and there's not that much on the agenda. There have been shorter meetings. It, it, it seems to fluctuate and depend, right? <laughs> but so we, the, the problem is we've got like three Slack channels, two groups, um, two meetings, and no focus as to which one's doing which bit. So if we have a telecom user group meeting once a month and we have a working group meeting once a week or whatever, for a given agenda topic, which one does it go in? So right now, the way I'd see it, um, Anne, is the, uh, based on and what Tal is um, saying, that this networking um, problem definitions and, and gap analysis would be a good topic in the CNF working group so that we could say, here's what's been happening there. I mean, it can always, of course, meet. Um, outside Tal, so if like working sessions and stuff like that, but that CNF working group meeting, we could talk specifically, hey, here's what we've done, some more information on the gap analysis, but stuff like Eno is a good place, I think, for the tag, and there's other things I know, Tal, that were in the slides that could be dig, dig more into them as far as um, what's available right now, not just Eno, but other stuff on the, that the task force slides have. Those could also be good in the tag. So if we, if we started meeting monthly on at least the versus every other month for this time zone, then maybe we can dig more into this. But that's how I'd see the split, Ian. Okay, thanks for the answer. Um. So, so quick, we, we have three more minutes left. I, I do want to say, well, I personally won't be able to join the, the CNF work group today. Uh, so if there's interest in continuing discussing, it's there. I'll, uh, I might be able to join a bit late. So um, uh, maybe other people here can uh, keep the ball rolling and, um, and I'll get updated somehow. Yeah, and we can always do it async um, Slack and there is mailing list for both of these. Right, right. Um, Reach out to me, Tal, and I'd, I would like to start getting some of these into, into the discussion board and other places sooner than later this week. Thanks, Taylor. I, re I really appreciate your help here. So I, I'll circle back around about the, I guess the next meeting, um, if, if unless um, we get some votes right now on the call, you can do a plus one in the chat, but do we wanna do a tag next, start having another one um, meeting rather than every two months at this time? I think there's no harm. If, if they end up being empty and uh, useless, we can just go back to once every two months, right? 
And we can always cancel to the, the idea would be um, asking for agenda items. And so right now, potentially we have Eno um, and I'm not gonna ask to give an overview in one minute. So we could definitely have that as the next one. And if there's availability, then we do it. If no one adds any agenda items, then we, we send out a notice that we're not gonna have that meeting. or end early, either way. All right, I'll, I'll put a post out. We may do like a vote, um, put, a, put like an online vote, see if there's feedback on having it at this time monthly, shifting to that or wh where we wanna go. Oh, Thanks sorry. everyone. <laughs> I vote yes, but yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Thanks, Hal. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.